Howdy ho there neighbors. This is Volvo's all new XC40. It's their smallest, most affordable SUV, and it's going toe to toe with BMW's X1, Lexus's NX, and Audi's Q3. We're gonna see if it's any good. Volvo's goal with the XC40 is to target a more youthful audience. The way they're doing that is with some funky styling on the exterior and some creative features on the inside. We'll go over the styling first. We've got Volvo's corporate signature grille up front and these T-shaped LED daytime running lights along the side here. We have some optional 19-inch five-spoke wheels uh, with diamond cut. They're sort of a, a white on black finish and I really dig these. They pop within the wheel housings here. As we go to the side, we've got ice white mirror caps and this contrasting ice white roof. And those are a $300 option and in my opinion, worth every bit of the money because as we come this way, we can see some of these creative styling features. The, uh, the white roof goes halfway down the C pillar here to this notch on the body panel. I think it really makes it stand out. You notice immediately that this is not your everyday luxury subcompact. The back is probably the most tame part of the XC40 styling wise, but one standout is these Volvo signature LED tail lights and then the Volvo badge spelled out across the trunk lid. The handle for the trunk lid is hidden down here. You press this button and then it is an automatic release. Under this clamshell hood, we see a 2.0 liter turbocharged four cylinder, makes 248 horsepower. In this, the T5 Momentum version of the XC40, that's connected to an eight speed automatic transmission. Zero to 60 is somewhere in the mid six second range. It's pretty quick, and that is all wheel drive equipped on this model. Volvo will release a T4 version of the XC40 that's gonna have less power, about 187 horsepower, and it's gonna be front wheel drive, but my opinion, this is the way to go. All wheel drive and this two liter turbo. Here at the back, Volvo really starts showing its ingenuity with the XC40. You've got this multi-option shelf here that can be lifted to store some things beneath it or can be folded up and then slot into this notch here. And it's got these hooks for bags that you can hang or you can put some items behind that and have them use this as a backboard so they don't go sliding around all over the place. I love this. I think it's so smart. 60-40 split folding seats. With this configuration, you've got 21 cubic feet of space. If you fold the seats down, you've got more options to fold those down. With this premium package, we've got power folding buttons here, so we press them both. And then you've got a nice big shelf for you to put all your items in. This is a privacy curtain, you can take it off. Let's go to the rear seats. Okay, so I'm sitting behind my own driving position. I'm about six feet tall. And as you can see, there's plenty of knee room here. The headroom is also substantial. Now you're gonna get more and especially more of an airy feel with this panoramic sunroof option, but even without it, I feel like I have plenty of vertical room. Shoulder space is good. Even this uh, center seat is not as compact as some of these vehicles are. You've got a USB port down here for your connectivity. And uh, yeah, dig in the rear seat space. Let's go to the front. Now we're getting to the good part. Hop in the driver's seat and you are greeted by a really nicely put together cabin. One thing that stands out immediately is this tiled pearlescent looking trim for the dashboard itself. Mates really well with these elongated air vents and this well integrated infotainment system. Unlike some of the competitors that have these tacked on infotainments, Volvo integrated this so well, I really dig this. And the menu structure and usability is excellent. So you slide along from your left menu that has a lot of your driver assistance features to the center menu that has your phone connection and your fuel economy and your navigation to the right menu that has all of the expansive apps available um, through Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which are standard on the Volvo XC40. One thing is because it's all touch, uh, you're gonna wanna get used to using the system before you head out and drive because working your way through the functions on the steering wheel and on this fully digital driver display and the infotainment can get overwhelming if you aren't fully familiar with the system. You've got your drive modes here. So you hit the drive mode button and you've got comfort, eco, off-road, dynamic, and individual. Um, those are all pretty self-explanatory, but it's cool to have the different drive modes. Turn the car on and you've got a really nice graphic from the fully digital driver display. Super crisp, very easy to read, um, day and night. I dig what Volvo is doing there. Now we're gonna get to some of the really cool stuff because there is a trash can integrated in the center console here. This is so cool. So you blow your nose or whatever, you throw the trash right in there and then 
when you want to throw it away, you just hit this button here and the whole setup comes out. You dump it, you put it back in, and you're good to go. You also have storage under the driver's seat. Maybe if you want to stick your wallet or something in there and hide it. You've got that storage option. Um, this little bin up here is great for loose change or things like that. And then you also have the availability of wireless charging for your phone. Um, I've tried this out on my iPhone 8. It works great, uh, even with a case on. Um, you've got two USB ports there, plenty of connectivity. I really dig what Volvo is doing with this cabin. Um, feels spacious, elegant, and definitely uh, oriented towards a youthful audience. Here we are setting off on our comfort cruise. One thing I have to point out immediately about the XC40 is the seats. They are incredibly comfortable. Some of the most comfortable I've felt in any car, much less a car that in this grade starts at 35,000 bucks. And uh, the good news in terms of ride quality continues because the suspension damping in this vehicle is very supple. Um, you can't adjust the, the damping like you can in some luxury vehicles, but the standard setting is both uh, firm enough for cornering stability, but also supple enough for driving over speed bumps and road imperfections. Here on the highway, it's cruising really, really nicely. Um, that two liter turbo cuts in and out whenever you need it, the turbo spools up really quickly and so if you need power you dig into the throttle a little a little more and you have plenty of punch but when you're just cruising along I'm in the the uh, comfort drive mode setting it uh, it feeds in and out nicely cabin noise is kept to a minimum there's not a lot of wind and, and tire noise that I'm experiencing here it feels like a solid luxury product um, I will mention the fuel economy because we're supposed to be getting 23 on the city and 31 on the highway. In mixed driving for me, I've only been seeing about 21.5 MPGs, which is definitely below those estimates. And I'm kind of wondering what settings I need to be in to get those fuel economy. Now there is an eco drive mode that I've only used once or twice, but it really robs the throttle. And if that's what required is required to get those EPA estimates, then I'm not feeling too confident about, uh, about drivers seeing those numbers on a daily basis. Um, it also has a start-stop function that I'm not a huge fan of, simply because the abruptness of the restart of the vehicle um, is such that you end up wanting to turn that off pretty frequently. I've left it on to try to see better fuel economy numbers, but it doesn't seem to be having that much of an impact. At $35,000 for the T5 all-wheel drive Momentum XC40, uh, this car is really teed up as a value play in the luxury compact segment. Yes, the X1 and Mercedes-Benz GLA and Q3 start at just a bit under that 35 grand, but you're also only getting front-wheel drive from those base level price tags for those cars. And when you view the XC40 as a package with all the standard features you get, I really see this as being um, a really well-equipped car and something that people won't have to go above and beyond with adding on packages and standalone options to get the XC40 they really, really want. This one has a few options. It's got the premium package that has things like adaptive cruise control, dual zone climate control, those kind of things. Um, and this one also has the panoramic, panoramic sorry, sunroof um, and a couple other standalone options. Priced as it as we're testing here, it's forty-four thousand dollars. I don't think you need to spend that amount of money. I think for forty grand, maybe a bit more, you can get a really nice XC40 that, frankly, has more features and is a nicer product than its main competitors.